Recently, the Supreme Court made a ruling that is going to affect college football players everywhere and how they are compensated. I'm sure you guys saw some of this, read some headlines, but I wanted to show a uh, video clip and kind of react to it if you've not seen it already. And that is uh, what Paul Feinbaum and uh, his friends had to say on, which show was this? Get Up, I guess. Uh, so it's a pretty quick clip, but I'm going to go through it, give you my thoughts on it as we watch this. So let's go ahead and take a look at this clip of them reacting and uh, giving their commentary on this new ruling from the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court of the United States decided unanimously that the NCAA cannot enforce rules limiting education-related benefits that colleges offer to student-athletes. This ruling will help determine whether schools decide to offer athletes. Okay, so... Part of what this ruling does is it's going to open up uh, student-athletes to, to, to where they can get more education-related benefits. This could be things like uh, laptops, anything that may help them with their education. I know they, they're going to define it a little bit more, or maybe they have, but this is strictly around compensating players related to their education. Athletes, tens of thousands of dollars in those benefits. And, and the opinions were scathing. This was from Justice Kavanaugh. Nowhere else in America can businesses get away with agreeing to not pay their workers a fair market rate on their theory that their product is defined by not paying their workers a fair market rate. The NCAA is not above the law. Okay, this is, this is incredibly important. So really what uh, Justice Kavanaugh was saying here is that, uh, that what the NCAA believes that their whole business model, which it is built around this, but their whole business model is built around the fact that they don't have to pay their workers. Their workers are the players. How is it okay for any business to structure themselves around the fact that they don't have to pay their workers? They don't have to compensate their workers. Somebody in the comments Name another business that can structure themselves that way. Name one. I'll wait. Let's keep going. And as we bring in Heather and Paul this morning, I feel like I've said that a hundred times, but it sure feels different when the Supreme Court of the United States has to say it. So, Heather Dinich, what does it mean? All the fans are out there thinking, what does this mean for college sports as we... I, I think... Well, what we're about to hear, I think she's going to give some specifics on uh, what the players can actually get. And I think it's going to be, obviously, it's going to be education related. But let me be quiet. Tell them. What's the answer? Well, today, the answer, it means that campuses can compensate their student athletes as long as it relates to education. So laptops, studies that come along with internships, those types of things, right? The NCAA can still implement something, you want to call it the no Lamborghini rule, I think is what Kavanaugh referred to it as. So, Okay, and what uh, she's hitting on that Justice Kavanaugh mentioned, the quote-unquote no Lamborghini rule, that's just, I think that's what most people are worried about. They're worried about boosters or somebody giving the players whether it's cash or uh, unfair compensation in their mind, um, like a Lamborghini, but they're, they're just worried about it destroying the integrity of the game. Ultimately, where I stand on this, if you've heard me speak on this matter at all, I think the players should be compensated. They're putting their bodies on the line. They're putting um, themselves out there. And ultimately, they're the ones that are doing the work. If you take away the players... None of the money exists. Bottom line. You take away the players, nobody makes money. So if that's the case, how is it fair for us to not compensate these players? That's just something that I think everybody is thinking about and should continue to consider as we go through this whole uh, player compensation thing, name and likeness, and everything else that's going to come up revolving around paying or compensating players. So let's keep going. They're trying to keep this in the box a little bit, but the bigger impact is what has the commissioner's attention here, and that is that it strengthens 
future lawsuits that are going to challenge amateurism. Okay, and that's one thing that a, a lot of people are worried about is this has passed now uh, before the Supreme Court. They've passed this ruling. They've made this determination. And now future lawsuits are going to happen. It, it will 100% happen. And lawyers are going to refer to this particular case to try to make their case for other types of player compensation. How successful they will be will you know, ultimately be up to the judges, but it certainly does provide a leg up for these arguments. In the NCAA. He really did. Kavanaugh brought the hammer down on the NCAA, and I think that that's the long-term yep. impact that has the commissioner's attention. As he should have brought the hammer down. Once again, unpaid labor, how is that okay? Let's be honest. Uh, and I know people are going to say education. They get education. Yeah, they do. Sure, Absolutely, I agree with that. But is that truly enough to uh, justify all the work they're doing and all the money that is being made off the back of their play? Pointed out that the opinion was unanimous for all nine of the justices. Paul Feinbaum, your reaction. Greedy, I know you're a big R.E.M. fan in the 90s. They had the famous song, It's the End of the World as We Know It. This is the end of the NCAA as we know it. The funeral hasn't happened yet. The last rites have not been uttered. But it's over for the NCAA. It won't happen tomorrow. Okay. It's a little doom and gloom. I'm not surprised from Feinbaum. But uh, as far as is this the end of the NCAA as we know it? Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. And the reason it's the end of the NCAA as we know it is their business model. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're going to make money and part of your model is to not pay people who do the work, there's a chance that could fall apart. And um, as we're seeing, that's what's about to happen. So, yeah, it is going to be the in end of the NCAA as we know it. And that's okay. They'll change. They'll adapt. They will figure it out next week but the next lawsuit will bury the ncaa and judge kavanaugh said that yesterday okay i don't know what he means by bury the ncaa i don't think they're going away but it will certainly change the way they do business yeah, that's exactly the opinion that we were looking for damian woody i wanted to bring you in again as one who had a, a great collegiate career at boston college as a former ncaa athlete what's your reaction okay before he talks um this is going to be interesting because uh, I've not seen this yet, but um, hearing from a player, if I was a player, I would be absolutely on board with this ruling because, you know, like I said, they're doing the work. They should be compensated for, for the work. And the argument is, is the education enough compensation? Is the room and board and the food they're provided while they're at school enough compensation? Uh, the guys at the war report argued, no, it's not because what about these players on the weekend? And I 100% agree with that. And let's see what, uh, this former player says. Greeny, I laughed so hard when that whole thing came down. Like I was on the floor laughing because Greeny, you don't understand, man. Like the fact that. Someone could go buy you a hot dog and you could be in hot water and then you see all of these, you see everyone else. <laughs> okay, that right there. How, how is it okay for uh, all these people to make all this money, but you can't can't buy a meal for a player? I, I mean, come on, guys. That's not okay. You, you can have, you know, saving and then making millions and millions of dollars, but a player can't. Uh, go somewhere and get a meal. They can't get a barbecue sandwich from the local uh, barbecue place. I don't get it. Uh, but I'm hoping that will change because what's wrong with feeding these guys? They're working hard. They're making money for the school. They're making money for the community. Let's take care of them. You know, profiting off, off the backs of the student athletes. You know, Mark Emmer making $4 million. Coaches making oh, there, nine, yep. ten plus million dollars, and then Greeny, everyone talks about student athlete. Well, guess what? If you're if you're a student, there's certain courses you can't even take because it interferes with the athletic side of it. So it's all hypocrisy. Okay, he just, 
He just made a fantastic point. How is it okay? How is it okay for us to say, oh yeah, you're being compensated. You, you're getting this great education. But the problem is, what if the classes you want to take, you can't really take them. Because you've got to go to football. You've got to go to practice or weight training or whatever other commitments you have. So the education you actually want, you can't really get. I don't see how that's fair. He's, he makes a very valid point. I'm going to try to keep up with this whole uh, Supreme Court ruling and everything that's going to follow because this is not going to be the end of it. There's going to be more that will happen, more that will come up from other court cases because this is just the beginning. And uh, I'm going to be there every single step of the way. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This uh, I think this may be the first kind of React style video I've done. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please go ahead and leave a like on this video. Just click that little thumbs up real quick. Leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And I will see you in the next one.